Okay, good morning. I'm going to talk even though people are ignoring me, and I'm okay with that because I have kids. Uh, but basically, while we're chatting, uh, we have one of our former patients. First name is Susan, Susan and she is a... Um, is it okay to say uh, that you guys were litter mates? That's not... Uh, yeah. Yeah. So we have another patient from Kansas. Who, oh, there he is. Hi, buddy. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. We're uh, videotaping, so I'll go ahead for a second. Nice to see you. Um, and one of the things we were talking about is some post-op questions. So while everybody's checking in, I'll go ahead and, and answer that. And one of our favorite post-op questions is uh, Susan was saying that Bud gets his blood tested every month. And we don't tell our patients to get tested except maybe once a year. So is Bud bad? No, he's not bad. He's wonderful, but we don't recommend you have to get your blood tested every month. But if you want to, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you could have different kinds. Everybody has their own hobby. Some people collect antiques, and if you want to get your if you want to get your blood test every month, there's nothing at all wrong with that. And that's related then to the second question that Susan asked, and she said, "What about protein?" Okay, if you listen, even people who haven't had surgery, the United States people who live in the United States, everybody, as far as I can tell, is wound up tight about protein. Protein. Got to get protein. Need more protein. Oh, you're bad. You're eating something that doesn't have protein. It, we would all do better if we just ate protein. So, you've heard all this stuff? On my web email mailing list, people are constantly giving each other tips. Oh, I found some great protein. I scored some really good protein. I got a protein shooter that has 40 grams of protein in it, man. And so I want to talk about protein for a second. All right, so people are worried about protein. It's an intense focus of a lot of my patients. And so I want to try and answer that because do you have to worry about low protein? That's kind of the question that we get a lot. And I think, in a way, Susan was asking that because she asked about the whey protein. I think you call it the wee protein. <laughs> and the creatine that we recommend. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that this morning, uh, try and answer some questions. Uh, it turns out that you all know the answer to this question already. And I'm going to see if I can kind of pull it out of you a little bit. Each one of you have talked to at least 10 of my former patients, right? And probably more than 10. Okay. Now, so we got all these people here. You've each talked to 10 different patients. I want you to raise your hand if you talk to any one of my patients who had low protein. There's one. You found one? Low iron. Low iron or low protein? Both. Okay. All right. So she we just found. Posted on yes, she just, just posted. Just posted. Okay. So there is one. In fact, there are a handful out of how many have I operated on? Four thousand. So low protein, in fact, can happen. It's just really uncommon. So what we generally recommend, as far as protein, is don't worry about it. We do think you should eat a healthy diet. We do think you should eat a healthy diet, and a little bit of supplemental protein is good. But you needn't worry about it. Now let's talk about the whey protein. W-H-E-Y. Whey protein has been given to lots of different kinds of people. They've given it to AIDS victims that are wasting away because they're so slim and sickly and it's helped build their muscle up. They've given it to weightlifters and muscle builders and it's helped build their muscle and increase strength. They've given it to burn victims, and the uh, small whey peptides have helped improve immunity. It helps coat and build the lining of the gut. So whey protein has a lot of positives, and there's something unfortunate that happens to you right after our surgery as far as your weight loss. Your initial weight loss after the surgery goes like this. Here's the way your weight goes down. 
Our average of all 4,000 people on the day of surgery is right at 300 pounds. Some are below that, some are above that, but the average is 300. The average weight loss for the average patient at one month is 30 pounds. At three months is 50 pounds, at six months is 80 pounds, and one year is 140 pounds. Now what I want to go back and ask you is, of the 30 pounds you lost in the first month, what was that? What did you lose? 30 pounds of, we wish it was fat. We wish it was fat. But it's mostly water and it's a lot of muscle. Now, your body shouldn't burn muscle. <coughs> the whole purpose of having fat in the first place is to use it as storage when you're starving. But if your body was good at using fat and burning fat, you wouldn't be here. Your body's not good at burning fat. And so against our wishes, against the best interests of your body, when you start starving after the surgery, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of that weight loss is muscle. Okay? So in some ways, you're like that AIDS victim. You're like the burn patient. You're like these other folks. And some extra whey protein can help build your immunity, build your strength, and build muscle. And the same thing is true for the creatine. Now, creatine is a three amino acid peptide, which you can buy at the grocery store and Walmart and GNC. And when you take it, it builds muscle. But not only does it build muscle, because it affects the energy function in the muscle cells and then the rest of the cells, then additional creatine has been shown to improve your brain's function. So when they gave creatine to elderly men and asked them to solve crossword puzzles in a nursing home, they improved their ability to solve puzzles by supplemental creatine. As my son says, are you feeling me? In other words, creatine helped improve brain function. They took this data and they took it to people with brain injury, mild brain injury. They gave some of these young uh, children and adolescents with brain injury creatine and improved some of their symptoms of headaches and dizziness and confusion. <coughs> they took mice and caused a stroke in little mice. Don't ask how. And the little mice who had a stroke, they compared to those with and without creatine, and the creatine helped protect the brain. So it's neuroprotective. Finally, they just gave creatine to one group of mice, and the other group of mice, they gave regular rat chow. So rat chow plus creatine, or just rat chow. And the mice that got creatine lived 10% longer. So, back to your question, Susan. Take the creatine and take the whey protein. How much? Well, take a little and see how it goes. Some people take a big tub of it and they say, oh, this is awful, I can't use it. So, take a baby spoon and mix it in with yogurt. Take a baby spoon and mix it in with a little um, uh, smoothie where you use some uh, ice, a little bit of uh, creatine or whey protein. Um, a little bit of uh, lactose-free milk and uh, put it in the blender and just do a little bit, not the big, you know, not like Rocky on the morning before his race, you know, you put the three eggs in and drink those and then go run. So that's a good question and that's, we'll start